Okay, here we are. Dennis Regling again with Possum Woods Puppets. And this short little video, I'm going to show you how to assemble just the foam puppet head. Now, I already have my mouthpiece put together. Okay, this is going to go in. This is the mouth plate. I have this put together here. Um, I'll leave a link to my other video showing how to make a mouth plate. But this will be ready to go into the head. And then, of course, we'll have to put in the red covering uh, the inside of the mouth. But I've got the finger tubes on. Got that reinforced good and strong. So this is ready to go on. I've traced my head pattern onto the foam. This is half inch foam. I've got the head pattern traced onto it. I butted the, I traced one side, flipped it over, and I butted it up so that I won't have completely two separate pieces, although this is actually two, piece, two pieces. This is my pair head pattern. Okay, this is my pattern. Um, I will I'll leave a link to purchase it if you wish to purchase this particular pattern. If you go to possumwoodspuppets.com, you'll find free patterns there and also patterns of purchase. I'm using a brand new, nice, sharp razor blade. And this will dull very quickly. Uh, these are my old scissors. Okay, sometimes I use these. Never use good scissors on foam. They will dull, the, they're going to dull the razor blade quickly. They will dull foam quickly. I mean foam. They are foam. The foam will dull scissors very quickly. Ruin your good sewing scissors. So don't use sewing scissors. I went ahead and put little dots on my pattern. On the edges I will not be gluing. When I, when I glue this all together, I want to remember not to glue certain pieces. So I mark those off. I want to take my razor blade keep it nice and nice and vertical, nice and square, and I'm on a nice square edge. Cut down. I'll save those larger foam pieces. I'll have a use for those. But just cut right along those lines. Nice and square, nice sharp razor blade, cut right through that foam, little effort. You know it's time for a new one when it starts taking an effort. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the razor blade square, straight up and down, get nice straight up and down cuts. This pattern looks a little complicated because there's a lot of little darts to get the shape, but it's really not. It's a nice pattern, a nice unique puppet head. You know, you can use a very traditional round head pattern. This one, as you'll see when I get together, gives what I call more of a pear head shape. A little bit of character in the shape. It actually goes along pretty quickly here. It's not that tedious of a job with a nice sharp blade. If you use an old pair of scissors, scissors cut the foam just fine. Then you try sometimes it's not as easy to get into these angles. So I do like the razor blade.
blade's already starting to get a little dull. Actually getting a little tougher to cut through the foam. Just to rip a little more. I'll switch it at the end. I still have another end of it. So we're just making that first cut. Done. Another high foam. You try to start a cut with a cut or a cut, it wants to pull it. So you can start from the other end, or just start a little bit in and then go back and trim it out. That sometimes makes it a little bit easier to get get a good clean cut. And I've got my pattern cut out. I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, duct tape. As I said, this foam really eats up blades. Scissors or razor blades. I'm going to put a little tape on this blade. Check, keep that blade from cutting anything. Dispose of that safely. What I'm doing is going to be gluing inside every one of these darts. Yeah, I tried to inside every one of these darts. I'm going to need to put some, we'll use contact cement. And then you can use hot glue. So this one has a lot of darts. So it looks a little more complicated. It's really not that complicated ahead. Now we'll use contact cement. You can use hot, uh, hot glue. You can use spray adhesive. Get in there. It's a little bit heavy here. I had a little too much on my brush. You don't really need to put the contacts in on that heavy. Just a light little coat. Stuff is amazing. Get the outside edges. You know, the two halves to be glued together. Get inside these darts. Because this particular pattern has a lot of darts, as I mentioned earlier, I made it a point to mark with dots where I'm not putting glue. Because I'm not going to put glue here. This is the mouth. Can you see this? Right here. Got those dots to mark the mouth. And I don't want to put the contact cement <laughs> where it doesn't go. Got my do my mouth shut. I don't want to glue the neck hole shut so I have dots to mark those places again here I got dots I know not to glue that <laughs> but when I get inside these darts
Just applying the glue that contacts the mat lightly. Actually, if you feel you need extra strength where the contact cement is joining, the best thing to do is put on a light coat and then go back through and put on a second coat as, to try, as opposed to putting on one big heavy coat. I'll get right in here. I'm probably do, I've probably done a lot of this off camera, so hopefully my voice is entertaining enough. Probably not. Here we go. Almost done. I'm using barge cement, barge contact cement. You can see the can here. It's my favorite. There's a couple other brands you can use. Yeah, Puppet. Buildingworld.com. There's actually an article about contact cements and choosing the best one. But I will admit, barge is my favorite because I guess probably because it's the one I've been using the longest. I've tried others. Well, I do. The contact cement's still wet. You don't really want to use wet contact cement against wet contact cement doesn't hold. You want it to get dry, kind of tacky. To do that, I'm going to use a hair dryer. And I'm just going to dry. That, dry that contact cement. A whole lot. Seen a few different puppet makers use that technique, so I don't know who to give credit to. But now I'm going to start pinching, pinching these together, pinching all those darts closed. Just pinch, get them in there, and we'll pinch that good. That one's got dots, so that dart is not closed. This dart's closed. Top one. There we go. So I'm getting that it pinches right in there, really nice. And once that hits, it stays. It's not going anywhere. There we go. Just working right now on closing the darts. I'm going to take this back side right here. Just finish rolling. It was all pinched in there, good. And there's the top of the head. And coming around, there's my mouth. And what I'm going to do is I've noticed this pattern always has a small mouth. I'm actually going to come make it just a little bit bigger. Make a nice big mouth on my puppets. This closed. There we go. So that's going to be our mouth. More darts around the neckline. The 
try to get these edges as even as possible. And for some reason, I put dots where I don't need them. Got one more area to close up here. Give it a contact cement. Give it a quick blow with the gun. There it is. Here's our head. Here's the mouth. Hand hole. If you want a little bit bigger hole in the back of the hand, you can trim that out. I think it's be fine. And now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to turn this whole thing inside out. And that'll put these seams, these little bumpy areas, inside the head. Now the next step to assembling the head, we'll be putting in the mouth plate. The two, two up top, one on the bottom of the thumb. That'll go in like this. And that'll be glued along here and along here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and go ahead and put my contact cement here, which we, and then I'm going to turn it inside out so it'll be on the inside right where I need it. So I'm going to cheat and put the contact cement on before I turn it inside out. Right there. You see that? Again, just nice and light. Contact cement's amazing how it holds. Barge is actually made for fixing shoes. Leather shoes. It, it will hold this foam. Let it just set up just a little bit longer, and these joints will actually be stronger than the foam. Where if you were to pull, it would rip the foam instead of ripping a part of the joint. Back here is where I joined the two halves together so there's no seam here, which is kind of cool. Made it easier to go together. Now, let's turn it inside out. Turn it inside out. Inside out. Outside in. Reversing it. Put my hand up in there. There we go. You know some of these seams smooth out. Seems to move out really nice. Now I'm going to need to put the mouth inside, mouth plate. So the next step is put some contact cement on the outside edge here. As I said, you're going to want to check out my video on how to make your mouth plate. I'll leave a link for that for you. Must, a good strong mouth plate is important. The mouth plate where all the action is. Okay. Be a little careful here. Want this right. Go right to, I'm getting that right to the edge. Get right to the edge of the mouth plate. Use the top. Use the bottom. There we go. 
Yeah, right against there. And then when I put my cloth in for the mouth, that's going to make it so much better. Trim this out right here a little bit. Mouth action there. That in there really nice. Notice between the two boards there's a little space. You can see the cloth that hinge. That gives more room for movement. I hate putting puppets on my left hand. But I'm going to do that because it helps you film it better. So there we go. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm a puppet. So now you see we've got this guy done. It's got that mouth plate right in there. Right along the edge. Top and bottom, right on the edge. And the inside. It's that easy to put together your puppet head. And here he is. Ah, here I am. Here he is. Hi, how are you? I'm on top of head. So we got him raw, assembled, ready to go. He's looking good. My next step will put in red felt. We'll put in red felt inside for the mouth. So I'll glue it along the edge here. And there's some, the, the, the mouth plate. So I'll be putting the red felt in there. Then I can cover it with fleece. And once I get the fleece on it, I'm going to attach a neck. Then once I have the, the fleece on the head and the neck attached, then I actually put the ears and the nose on separately. So this, this is my pear head pattern. I really like this. Got a lot of character. I'm bring it big down below. You can always build out the, a chin if you want more of a chin. You can build up cheeks. I've got videos on how to do that. But once you get this guy here, you get his ears on. I like nice big ears on these guys, on this pattern. Put the ear on, get some hair on. Fills out really nice. Some of the shape, if you want this shape to disappear, your hair can make that round out more. I just like the way it kind of shape up hair. Got a little bit of character great puppet head and that easy to put them together thank you for watching please go to puppetbuildingworld.com I have several videos I have articles tutorials free patterns patterns you can purchase this one's very inexpensive I do sell this one I sell it very very cheaply compared to a lot of places that sell patterns because I want you to get a hold of the patterns I want you to make great puppets and I want you to keep coming back to PuppetBuildingWorld.com. If you like this video, please, if you like this video, give me the thumbs up. That helps. If you want to see more videos, or see my new videos when they come out, please subscribe. When you subscribe, that helps me. As my subscriber base goes up, I'll have a chance to make a little bit of money from YouTube off these videos. And that would help me, certainly. So if I had to get up to a 1,000 subscribers first for that. And so... Share the video. Enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching. I never know how to end these things.